welcome back to We Are The Jordans. I am TK. I'm T. So this is episode four of Marriage Moments where we're going to be talking about navigating your finances together. together. So before we get started on this amazing video, I want to just give a quick disclaimer. You may be triggered. You may feel away after watching this video because we're talking about nav navigating finances and money in a marriage, not like everybody else does it. We're right. talking about it as one. And so ain't no secret bank accounts. Ain't no, I don't know what money you got. I don't know what you're doing with your money. Mm -hmm. We're talking about navigating as one. Because when you are married, you are one. So if you're not about that, that's not for you. And you, and you may get upset. Mm -hmm. But we do want to challenge you to think of your money as one. We don't do breadwinners, whatever, all those terms that are out there. It doesn't yeah. matter who makes more money. It's his money is my money. My money is his money. Right. So we, we both winning. That's how I wanted to start this video. Just to let you guys know that we are not going to be talking about secret bank accounts and hiding Amazon receipts. No. All right. So in every relationship, there's usually two types of people. There's, there's usually a saver. Mm-hmm. Which is me. Right. And a spender, which is him. Okay. So. Do I look like a spender? <laughs> be real. Look at my face. I ain't even got a haircut. So I'm saving money. You know what I mean? There's two people in a relationship. There's a spender and a saver. So I am the spender. Mm -hmm. He is the saver. Yeah. And, and so, um, obviously, that's an adjustment to have to put your money together with someone who is the total opposite when it comes to how they spend their money, how they view money, and how they look at money. So we want to kind of share ways that we've adapted to... Um, the spender saver. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, first, I do want to say that whenever we got married, we did like joint bank accounts. Um, so he can see everything in my bank account, vice versa. We have access to each other account and the savings account. Mm -hmm. Only account that he doesn't have access to, per se, is um, my business account, but he still can go in it and like look at it. It's just a different bank. Mm -hmm. So if it was the same bank, he, it would be connected. Um, but he has 100% access to that anytime he wants to. So, so we do combine our money. Um, and so yeah, so I would say personally for me, one of the biggest things that I had to um, adjust or change you know, being with a saver is really my mindset looking at money in, in general. Because um, for me personally, like, I've always just been like, you got it, you got to spend it, spend it, spend it, spend it, spend it. Right, and he's definitely, and he's a saver. And so one thing I had to look up, look at it is like, okay, we have money coming in, so we can spend some of that money, but we also need to save it. And so just appreciating saving money more and it wasn't until we kind of like joined back accounts and I actually like had that um, sense of like joy of having like a lot of money in my sitting in my savings account and it really made me appreciate saving a little bit more. So that's, I had to like really change my mindset on money. But I feel like now I'm better. Um, I still do feel like sometimes he doesn't want to ever spend money and I'm just like, bruh, like let's spend this money reasonably um so it's definitely like an adjustment and we have to talk about money to talk about it more intentionally because for him <clears throat> in his head he, he can have a whole entire budget and be good like oh i'm only gonna spend this on that this on that mm -hmm. like I, i'm not a numbered person in general so i have to see like okay let me see write it out let me see the budget let me see the plan and then you need to allocate a certain amount of money to different things or i would spend all my money on certain things that's something that is different between us, right? He's very, like, mental when it comes to money, I guess. And I'm visual, right? And so, I've had to adjust to that. And, like, I, it got to the point where I was like, okay, let me just write out what I think we should do with our money. Like, do you agree? Do you not agree? And then he'll kind of say his part. And he really doesn't even look at it, really. It's really just for me. So, it was definitely a big mindset shift for me. But also, I learned a lot. And I feel like I've grown mm -hmm. as well. <clears throat> and appreciate and been able to save money more now yeah, yeah. so with me um being a saver when she joined my bank account it was just like ah oh, here we go because i don't know what's going to happen so another thing would be to lay down the boundaries you know let each other know what to expect basically moving forward this is how we need to spend moving forward this is how we need to save so my thing is i'm a saver i don't really like spending as long as we spend like strategically you know what i mean like i'm fine with spending strategically like if we buy on something we need versus something we want 
later on we can buy what we want but let's buy what we need but that's just how it was at the beginning but now i've learned how to spend and recoup spin and recoup you can do that if you want to but me personally i still have in my mind all right look if i'm gonna spend i know like later down the line i need to be doing this that and the third to recoup that money 10 times over or whatever the case may be so it's just how you think about how you spend it so you just have to be very strategic and analytical which is how i am and how my mindset is when it comes to like money one thing i want to talk about is a financial goal setting yeah so when it comes to financial goal settings i think it kind of goes back to like our first video we did about communication and really sitting down and just talking about you know your thoughts on money what you want your money to do what you want it to look like because you can easily want one person can easily want to take that money and go all best all of it in like a property right mm -hmm. but then the other person's like oh wait no let's take this money let's go on a trip so just having like conversations about like what you want to do with money and having that common ground i know that money is one of the main reasons why couples argue mm -hmm. and thankfully we haven't we've never really argued about money mm. like we like we've never had an argument about money really um maybe like in a funny way like i don't know it's like we joked about it but we've literally never had an argument about money no. um because i think we communicate well about it i think we kind of have the same overall mindset like okay what we want to do with money and how we want to get money and exactly so on, so forth. yeah and so I, don't, I know people aren't like blessed to to say that um, and so I think my biggest takeaway when setting those financial goals is just hearing the other person out um, and understanding that person is going to be different from you and what can you compromise. I feel like one of the biggest things in marriage is really compromise because you're obviously two different people. Even if you're both spenders and you're or you're both savers, like mm -hmm. you're still different people. Really compromising and figure out what can work best for you. So like for us, like we homeschool, right? So like there's obviously things I'm gonna buy for homeschool. So I just say, hey, this is what I wanna buy from homeschool. Like, is this possible? How can we do this? You know, and I always find like more cheaper ways to do it. Like we print everything out at home, you know, instead of buying like big curriculum books. Mm. You know, and just say, hey, this is what I want. How does this look? Can we get this now? Can we get this later? Like right now, we um, I'm writing out all the curriculum we're going to need for this upcoming school year. And I'm going to have it out. I'm going to put it in like a spreadsheet or on like a Word document with the pricing so that he can see it. And then we can send it out to the grandparents so they can help pay for it too. <laughs> just, hey, this is, what I need, this is what I need to spend. Let's figure it out. And I think also too, using different resources to help with the budget and to help mm -hmm. see the money in a bigger picture rather than trying to, trying to show them how to look at it from your point of view. Right. One of the things that we occasionally use, right, whenever we need to be on a budget is a Dave Ramsey app. Right, right, right. Uh, I think it's called Baby Steps. I'm not sure, but we'll link it. And basically, it really shows you your budget. You can connect your bank account to it, customize everything. And you can go super, super in detail into it and use it like every single day, right? Mm -hmm. But it just lays out your budget, your money, but off the days you get paid and when your bills are due it tells you like if you're going to go over or under budget and it allows him to see the budget and me to see a budget from a realistic standpoint okay mm -hmm. this is like money we have this is what we need and then we can go in and add extra mm -hmm. stuff a tip on i guess financial goal setting and like like you said budgeting kind of goes into that mm -hmm. i would say regular check-ins right as far as like how much money do you have in the savings account one thing that we haven't really done and we done recently though is check your investment accounts. We have investments accounts, right? Whether it's a 401k or if it's a Roth, mm -hmm. right? Look at that money as well and see how you're doing in that aspect of it. So whenever you are setting goals together, right? Obviously one person may want another thing, like I said before, or you may have the same goals. But either way, when you're setting your financial goals, you need to look at them in two ways, short-term goals and long-term goals. So this allows for you two to really sit down and figure out what you both want and how you can work together to have a common ground. So a really good example could be, say he really wants to buy a house, right? And so his main focus is like, all our money needs to go towards a down payment for a house. But I'm like, well, no, we need to go to Disney World, right? So realistically, can can we save up money to have a down payment for a house within like the next year or so? Mm -hmm. mm, probably not, right? So that would be more of a long-term goal. And then Disney World, okay, we can we can achieve that. We can do that in like a year. A short-term goal. So now we have a longer-term goal to get a down payment for a house, which might take usually two to three years or more right and setting up for a vacation a year so now we're saving up a little bit of money every single month week or however you want to do it mm -hmm. to get to that long-term goal of buying a house while also saving a same amount of money for a vacation mm -hmm. right 
So that's kind of how you can set your short term and your long term goals and make sure that they align for everybody. Um, so that no one's feeling left out, right? And then you also don't want to lose your life because you're trying to save up for like something as like retirement or a home or a car. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, having short term and long term goals allows you to really see what can you achieve now and what can take a little bit longer so that you can't do more than one thing. For example, a down payment for a house is probably going to be like 10K or more, right? And then like Disney World is like a couple thousand dollars trip right maybe even less depending on how you want how long you wanting to stay or it's a trip to anywhere so just breaking that down um is very helpful i feel mm -hmm. of how you can actually like set goals but something you can kind of do now like sit down what are your short-term goals what are your long-term goals you know i will start off by writing out one person what is most important to me when it comes to money and what do i want to save for or what do i want to see us with money in the next one year three years and five years right you both should write that out mm -hmm. then come together okay what do you have in common that's going to be easy to plan out now what you need to plan out is what is on his list that you like we don't need that and vice versa mm -hmm. and figure out how you can both achieve that and if it's something we can we need now or you need now or you need later um, and, and also know that it is achievable too the only way that it is achievable is while you're having a conversation think about ways that you can set money aside to these different funds you know, funds for like going on that trip or funds for uh, the house or funds for a car payment or set aside that money so that you can be able to do both if you want to do both. But if you just have your mind set that you don't want to do it, then don't do it. Exactly. You gotta do it together. Yeah. You know, you can't um, do it by yourself. One of the more important funds would be the emergency fund. We were told, you know, after watching the Dave Ramsey videos and doing financial peace that you need to have at least a thousand dollars in your emergency fund, all right? To start off. Yeah, to start off with, yeah. you know, and then you just build on top of that. The goal is to have like three plus months mm -hmm. of expenses in your emergency fund. And I would say too, because like life happens, like sometimes you're gonna have an emergency fund and then you're gonna blink your eyes and you're not gonna have one. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's okay. Um, if you build it once, you can build it again. Yeah. You know? Um, and I think it's important to have because like I said, life happens. What kind of also help ease any financial tension that you guys may already have? Because if you're like, oh, well she's spending all the money, but oh, okay, cool, we got a couple G's. What, what did you just say? Did you even say that, a couple G's? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if they still use that. We still got a couple G's at the savings account, so we good. Oh, Lord. You know what I mean? That is just something, it'll help ease that tension, just having like, especially like for the saver. Mm -hmm. Like if you know you got that money in your account, okay, this this girl, this man, spending this money, but it's okay, we got this money in the savings account, and we're good. Mm -hmm. You never know what's gonna happen. I'll give you guys an example that happened between us two. Remember my birthday maybe a couple of years ago we went to Houston oh yeah so we went to Houston because we had saved up some money to you know take a vacation for my birthday we were down there the brakes were squeaking yeah we drove my car yeah the brakes just got worse and worse each day we were down there it got to the point where it was scrubbing every time we you know did anything with the car turn left or right moving forward backward whatever so we went to the, the nearest auto shop and we had to drop some bread and and new brakes. Yeah, to get new brakes. New brakes and like other parts, they go with the brakes. Yeah, yeah. so it was, was a lot of money. It was a lot. It was quite a bit, but luckily we had the emergency fund to be able to exactly. take care of that. So that's yeah. why you need that. Yeah, our emergency fund has definitely like helped us out a lot. It allowed him to be able to take off work. Whenever I had Nova, our second child, it allowed him to take off work. Even though it wasn't paid, we had money, so we were good, mm -hmm. you know? So it, it's just really a lot of financial tension, not just for like the other person or just for you in general. Right. Um, and basically, if you're a, a spender and, you're, and your person is a saver, and you look at that account when you join up, <laughs> Like, it's no other feeling than like, oh, he got me, like, or she got me, but like, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> Trying to get me for my money. <laughs> like, I'm good, like when, we, like, when we join our bank account, we never, like, seen each other bank accounts, ex like, until we got married. Like, I think we might have showed each other, like, a couple times, you know? No, like a little flash. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. But like, we've never, like, seen each other bank accounts, like, shared it, was in it, until we got married. So, we've been together for, like, five, six years before we got married, and we've never seen each other bank account. <laughs> And so y'all, when I saw when I, we joined bank accounts, I was like, oh yeah, money ain't got me. I'm good. You know what I mean? Because I'm a spend, I'm a save, I'm a spender, so I never really saved up money. So I really never had a good savings account until like you know the past couple years uh, when I actually started saving it, and I got his account too. I don't went off on a rant, y'all, <laughs> on that. But let's get back on topic. So now let's kind of talk about debt and credit. Okay. So whenever you become someone's spouse. Not only do you get their money, you get their debt. 
and their credit. And not everyone has good credit, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to also think about that too. So a lot of people have student loans. Maybe your person is a credit card person and they have a lot of credit card debt. Thankfully, when we got together, we didn't have like really any credit card debt. I think I had only $300 in credit card debt. That was it. That's also another aspect of money that could really cause tension because um, credit cards can be amazing if you use them right. Mm -hmm. Right. There are rules to credit. There, credit is a whole system. Good credit, bad credit. Yeah, it's a system. You have to know how to work it, right? And so... You may have that person who's blowing up the credit cards and that uh, that affects you as well because even though it's not your credit score, y'all apply for cars together, y'all apply for houses together. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all are, at the end of the day, y'all are one. So if, you're, if you have an 800 and your partner has a 505, oh, you know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. You have a power pop too. Yeah. Um. So I think when it comes to credit and it comes to debt, I think just be open and honest. This is my credit score. This is what I have for debt. Like when we first got together, like I didn't have the best credit because I had got a um Victoria's Secret credit card and <laughs> I ran it up, ran it up, right? And I bought all my friends from Victoria's Secret. I don't know why, but it's okay. <sighs> and so I told them, I said, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. When we first get together, we're gonna live off your credit for a while until I get my life together. My life is now together, and I, I am a positive contributor to the relationship. Yeah, so we're good now. <clears throat> but I told them from the beginning, listen, I don't have good credit. You know, I, I was like 21, what I say? 22. Better don't even worry about it. Gotcha. <laughs> been like oh I'm, I'm gonna buy you no low credit though you know what i mean like you gotta I, you have a credit score requirement for him what he <clears> want <throat> in the marriage right yeah but that, so, could be, that could be a deal breaker for you know what i mean for this day and age you yeah. know so um so i think we're open and honest and then even while we're through the loan debt like how much debt do you have how are you gonna pay that off how are you gonna pay credit card off because if you're if you're really navigating this one and you're creating a budget together mm -hmm. the payments that i have to make or you have to make from your credit cards or from your student loans or whatever other kind of debt you have is going to come out of my money as well if right. we share money That's so it right. matters if mm -hmm. he has good credit it matters if he has debt and it matters if he has a whole bunch of loans if or she right you know what i mean and so it affects each other <clears throat> and so that goes back again to thinking of it as one these are not accurate numbers but for example he may have five thousand dollars in debt and i may be ten thousand dollars in debt so that means we are $15,000 in debt together. together. Mm -hmm. And so we have to figure out how we're going to pay that off together. So thankfully we don't have a ton of debt um, besides student loans in our car that we just purchased. Some of the main things you can do to relieve debt and credit stress is one, knowing your credit score. You can get your credit score for free. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say come up with a payment plan, figure out how much debt you're in. Write it out and how are you going to tackle that? I would say like there are credit companies that you can invest in that can boost your credit. What are, what are other things they can do to kind of relieve their stress when it comes to debt and credit? Before we move on, if you're one of those people that don't like credit, keep in mind that you're going to have to use it sooner or later. I was one of those people that didn't like credit at all. Uh, I Yeah, I am one of the people that don't like credit at all. I had to realize that there's good credit and there's bad credit. In order to get, you know, an apartment complex, you have to be able to you know have a credit score in order to car. get a car mm -hmm. you need a credit score so you have to keep that in mind when it comes to like credit even though you don't like it just keep in mind that you're, you're going to need it you can do something as simple as buying a, a gas card and just using the credit card and then going and pay it off you're using thirty dollars on the credit card for gas then go pay it off simple exactly so just educate yourself on credit mm -hmm. and how to use it like there's certain like utilizations you have to stay under and all that Maybe we'll find like a credit resource that can kind of explain that. We can link some um, YouTube channels to talk about credit yeah. for you guys so you can kind of do your own research on that. And talk about that. Exactly. In the comments. The last couple of things we want to talk about is uh, regular check-ins and what else? Professional help. Alright, so regular check-ins. Make sure you have these, whether it's weekly or monthly. Sit down with your significant other and talk about, you know, the budget. Talk about tracking these goals that you need short term and your long term that you have. Uh, together talk about adjusting the budget if you have something else that comes about like uh, extra bill that comes up like a gas bill or what Best Buy bill that you bought <laughs> you know I'm just talking about from experience right now because we just added on another bill so if you're adding on another bill learn how to adjust your budget or talk about how to adjust your budget check-ins are great mm -hmm. for sure and I would say too when it comes to money we are not money experts gurus whatever the word you want no. to use so get you an accountant get you a cpa um get you a financial advisor mm -hmm. someone that can help you and explain these things to you in detail 
um, and, and let me help you with the budget, right? There are a lot of people out there that offer this service. And then I'll also say if you are struggling with money and if it is bringing a lot of tension and you cannot come to an agreement or it's just not working out or it's really like hurting your marriage, get professional help, like look for a counselor, right? So the combination of a financial advisor or a CPA or, or somebody and a counselor may be what you need. Um, always seek out professional advice, especially when it comes to financing, financing, finances, mm -hmm. and financing too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is um, really, really important. There are people who do this for a living. And another thing they can do, if you are a saver and you don't want to spend on professional help, you can go to YU, uh, YouTube University. Yeah, go to YouTube, look up some videos, and figure out what you can do about your finances together as couples. Yeah, we'll tag some people. We'll find some channels for y'all. All right, so that's the end of this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. We hope you really like this one. Uh, tune in because we have another one coming. Anything you want to say? Yes, hit the notification bell. Um, we do vlogs. We do um, content like this. Um, and also, comment below. How are you and your um, spouse when it comes to money? What do you guys need to work on? And what is one thing you took away from this mm -hmm. um, that you're going to take and put into action, whether in your own couple or share with a friend? Um, and make sure you share this with three people yeah. who you know that's married and they need help with their money. Tune in. Uh, the next video will be our last video. For the series. For the series. Yeah, so we're excited about that one and you are really going to enjoy that one. So like I said before, like, comment, and subscribe and get ready for the next video. We'll see you.